gentlemen. I think there's a simple relation between minimally invasive surgeons and imaging cardiologists. The less you can directly see during your operation, the more you hopefully can rely on imaging. And here you can expect from us, from echocardiography in mitral regurgitation. All right. I would like to focus a little bit on mitral regurgitation because I believe that uh, this is much more interesting for surgeons than mitral stenosis. So first of all, um, the echo imagers should distinguish between functional and degenerative mitral regurgitation. Ask for the distinct mitral regurgitation mechanism. Ask for severity of mitral regurgitation. Ask for the impact of the MR on first left atrial size and function, left ventricular size and function, <coughs> pulmonary circulation, and on the right heart. Most importantly, imaging cardiologists and surgeons have to speak the same language. They have to use the same nomen nomenclature. Standardized display is key. So the, for example, the Carpentier scheme has to be seen here needs to be translated into echo views, 3D echo views, two-dimensional cut planes, and vice versa. Let's go th through this systematically. Mechanisms of MR, functional classification, Carpentier type one, normal leaflet motion, annulus dilatation. This is not a disease of the valve. This is a disease of the ventricle. Perforation of the valve also belongs to type one. Type two, this is excessive leaflet motion due to rupture of or elongation of the tendinous cord or papillary muscles. How does it look like on echo? Dilated left ventricle is typical, low ejection fraction. Again, this is, a, this is not a valve disease. This is a ventricular disease, normal uh, mitral valve morphology uh, that may be, of course, combined with restricted leaflet motion or other types of uh, functional or um, degenerative MR. So ask for these cut planes. Where is my mouse? Oh, the mouse is here. Ask for the two-chamber view, the three-chamber view, the four-chamber view, and the column mode, of course. MR due to congenital cleft. Usually the anterior mitral leaflet is affected. Uh, perforation also belongs to type one. That can be nicely seen here. There's no central jet. It may be combined with H receptor defect of the primum type. Mitral regurgitation type two, prolapse. Prolapse, that does mean motion of parts of the mitral valve of more than two millimeters below the annulus level. May be, may be um, combined with myxomatous um, degeneration. Myxomatous leaflet is characterized by thickening of the leaflet of more than five millimeters. Mitral regurgitation type two, prolapse due to fibroelastic deficit. PML is more, more frequently affected than the anterior mitral leaflet, and this is the standard 3D view of the mitral valve on the left side here. So this is the so-called RFES view from the left atrium onto the mitral valve. It directly corresponds to the uh, Carpentier scheme, and that is the view from the left, the corresponding view from the left ventricle. Thickening of the prolapse sink part is typical. Usually this is combined with ruptured cords. How does it look like on 2D? The AML is rarely affected, but can be affected as to be seen here. It's an A3 prolapse, but sometimes it's also a multi-segmental prolapse, although this is not typical. Um, single segment prolapse is typical for fibroelastic deficit, but sometimes it happens that two segments are involved as nicely can be, as it can be nicely seen here. A3 and P3 are involved into this um, problem. So much regard in valus disease, <laughs> that is due to myxomatous degeneration of the leaflets. Um, nicely shown by leaflet thickening. Both leaflets are usually affected. Excessive tissue prolapses into the left atrium. And here is uh, how it looks on 2D echo. 
more than one segment are involved and we have eccentric jets and here you can nicely discern the thickening of the segments A2, P3 and others. So functional classification type 3A, this is diastolic leaflet restriction, this is rheumatic disease. So this is a disease of the valve itself, of course that can be combined with mitral stenosis and type 3B, this is again functional MR, systolic leaflet restriction, usually post MI, sometimes <coughs> also um, um, occurs sometimes also in dilative cardiomyopathy. And here is uh, how it looks in um, on echo. Diastolic restriction can be nicely discerned here on the transthoracic echo. The posterior mitral valve leaflet is more restricted than the anterior one. Central or eccentric jets can occur. Thickened, distorted, and calcified leaflets are typical. Thickened, fibrosed, and retracted cords are typical. And of course, again, that can be combined with mitral stenosis. Ask for the tenting area and the tenting distance to further describe this kind of mechanism, this type 3A mitral regurgitation. There are also two subtypes of type 3A re mitral regurgitation. The first one is the asymmetric type, characterized by posterior traction and eccentric jet, and the symmetric type, characterized by apical traction, resulting in a central jet. Type 3B, functional MR, due to um, ischemia and myocardial infarction, normal leaflet morphology, abnormal wall motion. Eccentric jet is typical. Here nicely to be seen in the two-chamber transthoracic echo view. And here in the transesophageal view, you can nicely see how restricted the posterior leaflet is the motion or the movement is um, clearly limited and changed. So how to quantify mitral regurgitation? There are a lot of parameters. Mitral regurgitation quantification is a multi-parametric approach. And that is why we have to select some parameters uh, which are most effective and most valid. And these are the following. The vena contractor, very simple but very um, well validated. The regurgitant volume, the pulmonary venous flow pattern, and the PISA-derived regurgitant opening area. So these four are, the, are completely sufficient to quantify mitral regurgitation. Here's the vena contractor, one example, four chamber view, zoom mode. The smallest jet di diameter is taken the same in the TE image, smallest jet diameter, reading in two perpendicular cut planes as recommended, <coughs> and ask for zoom mode to be precise. Systolic reversal flow um, helps to estimate the left atrial pressure, but also the severity of the mitral regurgitation. There's no severe mitral regurgitation without systolic reversal flow. <coughs> Search in different pulmonary veins if you miss it. PISA method, very elegant method, looks very objective, does just needs a few parameters as our maximum velocity, velocity time integral, PISA radius, and some settings from the machine. And then the echo machines calculate you the effective regurgitant opening area and the regurgitant volume. PISA method should be taken at least in the four-chamber view, better in two perpendicular, chain, uh, chain, uh, two perpendicular views. A uh, certain um, Nyquist range should be selected and continuous wave Doppler needs to be used uh, to calculate then here the opening, oops, opening uh, area and the volume, the regurgitant volume. So nevertheless, the PISA me uh, method looks very elegant and objective. However, it is based on geometric assumptions. 
The most important one is that the regurgitant orifice opening is circular, but in reality it is not. And that is why the PISA method should be performed in two perpendicular uh, cut planes. Please ask the echo imager for that. And the same is true for the vena contractor. Otherwise, you can make big mistakes. Coanda effect, other pitfalls. What is that? Eccentric jets are error prone. Why is that? The jet is sometimes shaped like an onion skin, but is much, much bigger than it looks like. 3D color can help to estimate the real size of the jet and the real severity of the regurgitation. The much regurgitation also depends on loading condition and hemodynamics, and that is why stress echo has a role. Here's an example, the vena contractor, just four millimeters. That's not severe, that's uh, moderate. And uh, the regurgitated volume is uh, not that much, but on stress, we uh, have another image of that. The, the, the uh, vena contractor is seven millimeters and the regurgitant volume as well as the regurgitant opening area reach um, critical limits. So here are the principles of much regurgitation echo evaluation. Um, the evaluation is based on a multi-parametric approach. Use vena contractor, PISA, pulmonary venous flow reversal. Use all available tools as are TTE, but not just TTE, also TEE, color Doppler with 3D, 3D with and without color Doppler, stress echo, and mind the pitfalls. Pitfalls are geometric assumptions, um, Doppler angle and Coanda effect. And follow up the patients accordingly to the guidelines, for example, every six months in severe asymmetric much regurg with normal ejection fraction. Thank you.